because we've got to help the next generation of people so we just still have a rabbit industry and those kids that are kids now enjoy it all the way through their life. Because I have. My name is Scott Williamson. I'm from Clovis, California. I teach at California State University, Fresno. I'm an animal science professor there. I've held a li judge's license since 1977. I am Judge 386. Originally, I'm from LaPorte, Indiana, which is a city near Lake Michigan, so we got blasted with snow every winter. At the fair, there were the rabbit tent and poultry tent. And uh, I said, hey, Dad, is it all right if I uh, get one of these rabbits? He said, well, you gotta buy it yourself. You gotta take care of it. I said, okay, I'm ready to do that. I bought this rabbit for $1.50. And then uh, about six months later, we started going to these rabbit uh, meetings at Frank Thompson's house. And Tom Shufflebottom would come over there from Valparaiso because it was kind of like a rabbit meeting, but kids were invited to it. Although my dad didn't like it very much because the adults started drinking. But there was always something for the kids to drink besides beer or whatever the boys were drinking over there. Tom brought some rabbits over the, to one of the meetings for Frank to harvest for meat. And there was a torque buck in there. And so I started breeding rabbits. And then I developed this friendship with Tom Shufflebotham. He was an ARBA judge also. And he traveled the country and he imported Dutch from England and had some of the best Dutch in the country. And that's where my herd started. And I'd go over to Valparaiso, it was only 30 miles from the port, all the time to learn from him and to help him. That's my very first show I went to. 15 years old in that picture. There's four blue ribbons on that and a trophy to boot. That's the day I got hooked. Probably one of the most impactful shows that I went to was a show that was in uh, Tipton, Indiana, and uh, Bobby Burns was judging there. It was 1970, and I was acting disinterested in what Bobby had to say. You, know, you don't do that when Bobby Burns is talking. Young man, come back here behind this table. <laughs> you talking to me, I said. <laughs> so I went back behind the table, and he taught me more about type than I've learned from anybody else, even on the livestock judging team. He drew a little picture for me, took the time to do this, and this is what we need to have time for. This is where education and shows become very important to me because Bobby took that time. I've had so many positive role models and rabbits along the way that I couldn't help but succeed. I went to the, my first ARBA convention was Syracuse, New York in 1970, and I loved the experience. I love the late night talks, even though they were checker giants, Chet Jenkins could spin a yarn, let me tell you, and you could learn a lot just by sitting by those checkered breeders and watching rabbits run and listening to what they had to say. I wish we still could do that at the shows, because that's where I learned a lot. And we competed in the youth contest, at the time there was only judging and the king and queen contest. And that's uh, where I got indoctrinated to those royalty con that royalty contest. And I tried my hand at it, and I didn't win. Bobby Whitman won that year. But the next year, we went to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1971. Walt Case was a uh, father figure to me, along with my dad. Obviously, they both drove us out there. Uh, Walt didn't even take his own son. I didn't have a kid involved in him. Didn't have a dog in a fight, so to speak. And he took us, took us all that way. That was a long trip. We studied for the royalty contest and judging contest all the way out there. Lo and behold, I was able to win the ARBA King Contest in 1971. And making friends in a rabbit industry continued because when you go to a national show out in different places, you meet different people. And so that's really the cool part of this hobby. Right. You know, I'm friends with people that I like to beat, and I'm sure like to beat me, but we're still friends. And the other species, they don't even talk to each other, you know. And that's where I think rabbits have it over these larger species and how they compete. I had a friend once, I offered him $1,000 for a rabbit. He turned it down. But he was a true friend. The rabbit was sterile and he knew it. And some of these other species, they took your money and went to the bank and cashed it. And I tell my students all the time, I said, you're the only person that can give up your integrity. My daughter, Kelly, uh, she went back to her grandparents' house and helped her grandmother clean out the attic and in the attic were some of my school records so she came back and she gets my grade school cards out she goes hey dad what's all these c's 
<laughs> I said, that's BR. She goes, what do you mean BR? As you can probably guess, that's before rabbits. Probably kept me out of trouble. Kept me busy. I was around with a pretty rough crowd for a while, and I got interested in these rabbits. And uh, all of a sudden, my time was occupied by something beneficial. And uh, all of a sudden, I started reading. It wasn't, you know, li English literature. It was rabbit stuff. I couldn't get enough information about rabbits. I found that one special key that unlocked them. Talking to people, it helped me come out of my shell and become more extroverted instead of introverted because rabbits was that vehicle for me. You know, I grew up in a country, I, I didn't make friends real easy and rabbits were truly my friends. But some of my best times were after I cleaned out the Dutch hutch, that's what we called it, they were solid floors, so it required a lot of labor. I'd re-bed it with straw. You could almost feel the happiness as I sat there and listened to them. That's relaxing. That was to a kid that was 17 years old. Yeah, I got teased a lot by my friends in school. But those weren't truly my friends, I guess. I can remember the first time I took uh, my first wife out, Diane, I says, I got to know something's pretty important to me. So I took her out to the rabbit tree. I said, these are important. She supported that hobby and showed right along with me. I think that's important that you have somebody you can show with. You look at the successful people in rabbits, they usually have somebody that they're partners with and that help them either as friends you know, or a husband and wife or partners. So my dad and I had that too. When I first started, he'd look at him, I'd look at him, we'd talk about him, and you need that. You need somebody to keep you from being hutch blind. Uh, what brought me out here was the opportunity to teach in the nice weather. I didn't want my rabbits to have to lick ice to get water. Our last stop was down at Bakersfield, and we gassed up, and so I started down the freeway again, and there's people honking and waving, and I thought, oh, this is a friendly state. Oh, behold, the door, we left, forgot to let the door open. And we closed the door and said, man, Somebody was smiling on us there. And that night we made it up here to Fresno, California. That was January 12, 1985. Doc Jacobs had some great Flemish giants. And he took me over to his house and had me evaluate his Flemish giants when I came out here for the interview. He's a meat scientist here at Fresno State. I could not get this job. This is a unique university because we have, we've always had two rabbit people on faculty here. It's challenging to find any other university that has two people that have an, a very avid interest in rabbits. Ideally like to do is take what's in my head, not all of it, some of it's scary. Take <laughs> what I have in my head and I'll put it in the <clears throat> student's head so they have a leg up. So they can take off from where I'm at and go even higher to make the best better, so to speak. If you want to be a good student, you got to be a good listener. People don't put enough emphasis on that. They talk about oral communication, written communication, but the most important communication is the ability to listen. And that's what makes you a good judge, to listen to what people have to say. Talk to people that are successful. And then it makes you a good breeder. You listen to judges that do know what they're talking about in that breed, that are experts in that breed. They're trying to help you. Judges, most, I think most of them really are in it to help people. Because let's face it, you're not in it for the paycheck. I'm in it because I love to help people. This is a early vintage California. This is a show in Hanford, California. Diane, and that's me. We won Best in Show in that Hanford Show, Central Valley. And uh, this is my son, Bo, and this is my daughter, Kate. And that she won Best in Show. So we won Best in Show in Open and Best in Show in Youth. Every one of these kids that I have is associated with a rabbit show somehow. I told them both Bo and Hannah are a result of coming back from an ARVA convention. Every one of my kids has shown rabbits. These are the four trophies I'm most proud of. I think because of his experience at rabbit shows and his desire to compete and the ability to engage people, because you learn that at rabbit shows, he had a drive to develop leadership skills and he still has those, that drive today. And he was the uh, national FFA president in 2006. And that's quite an honor to be a national FFA president from California. This right here is a, a plaque that was presented to me by the American Dutch Rabbit Club. And this is a hall of fame. 
And it was quite an honor to be presented with this because just the year before, my dad won the Hall of Fame award. It was one of my proudest moments, I think, in raising Dutch because I won best of breed at the National Dutch Show in 2011. Because that's the show of shows for Dutch breeders, is that National Dutch Show. And you've got to have a good rabbit, you've got to have a little luck. Since it was in Wisconsin, we posed on a block of cheese. Rabbits have taken me a lot of places. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. Because uh, it's helped me become a better person. Get ready, cause here it comes, it's a light of beautiful That's why I got that competitive drive.